Alright guys, I'm back with my review of TNA Impact Wrestling for March 27th, 2014. Oh, this show here. The Hunt for Willow. Do I really need to say anything else? How disappointing was the conclusion to that bullshit, The Hunt for Willow? They do this whole thing, the entire show, with EC3 and Rockstar Spud. I'm just going to go ahead and talk about this. They're doing this whole thing with EC3 and Rockstar Spud. They're in the woods looking for Willow, and at first they do a bunch of comedy. Then EC3 goes into a barn, and while he's in there, Willow kidnaps Spud. Then EC3 is searching for Spud. He finds him in this old house. Willow shows up. He's cackling. He beats EC3 with an umbrella, then he runs off back into the woods, and EC3 stands up and says, Oh, it's on now. The game is on. That was the end of it. It was very disappointing. So anyways, that's the hump for Willow. I'm not going to talk about it again. That's also what they ended the show with. So MVP comes out. He tells Magnus that... Well, Magnus says Abyss works for him. He doesn't work for MVP. And MVP says, Abyss can only be in the ring when you are. Magnus says, yeah. So MVP says, next week it's going to be you versus Abyss for the title. Magnus is freaking out about this. MVP thinks this is a way to control Abyss by giving him a title shot. He says Joe will also be in it. So Samoa Joe comes out and he's pissed off because this isn't a fair rematch. This is a handicap match. Magnus and Abyss. So he gets in MVP's face and then he attacks Magnus. Then Abyss attacks Joe. Then MVP attacks Abyss. Then Eric Young runs out. Abyss and Magnus leave. Eric Young says he wants in the match. He cuts a great promo on why he should be in it. And MVP puts him in. And now Joe is pissed off about this, even though Eric Young really only wants in the match to take care of Abyss, which would give Joe a fair shot at Magnus. Joe is still pissed. So the two of them start brawling, and two referees break it up. <laughs> Just two. They break up this brawl, and then Joe challenges Eric Young to a match later tonight. The Wolves ask MVP for a tag team match against Magnus and Abyss. For MVP, they say this is for you. We want to help you out. We'll fight Abyss and Magnus for you. So he agrees. It's the Wolves versus Abyss and Magnus. And I thought this match was pretty good. Davey dives onto Abyss on the outside. Then Eddie makes Magnus tap with a single leg Boston Crab. And afterwards, Abyss is pissed off because Magnus, he didn't even try. He basically just tapped out immediately. So he's holding the title, and Magnus is like, okay, hand me my belt, and Abyss just looks at it and then walks to the back carrying the belt. Angelina Love comes out, and she wants to know why Velvet Sky has not been answering her phone calls. So Velvet comes out, and she says, I just, I didn't sign on for this. You attacked Madison. You were supposed to make nice with her, and I just, I didn't do, I didn't sign on for this. So Angelina says tonight it's going to be me versus Madison Rain and you better pick a side. I just I don't care about this. I know they need fresh knockouts and all that. And they're trying to do something with the beautiful people again. Maybe it will get better. But so far it's just not been very good in my opinion. Then Bully Ray comes out and he has all these people wearing Bully Ray t-shirts come out bringing tables. They got like seven tables. So the commentators are talking about these people saying they're fans, but they're clearly just local indie wrestlers. So all these people come out and they set up the tables and Bully Ray starts cutting a promo on Bobby Roode. I have no idea why you would take someone who is a great heel, probably the best heel in your company, and turn him babyface. It's just whatever. But Rude comes out. Bully Ray wants to fight him. Rude refuses. So Bully Ray attacks him. They brawl around for a while. They tease a bunch of table spots. And then finally, Bully Ray charges Rude. Rude moves out of the way. Bully Ray goes through a table. And then Rude just leaves. This was very disappointing. Especially when you consider that there were seven tables out there. And nobody went through a table except Bully Ray and that was his own dumbass fault. Nobody actually got put through a table here and they had all these freaking tables. Just very disappointing. 
Abyss is yelling at Magnus backstage for tapping out. He says he doesn't like losing. And Magnus says, well, you better get used to it because next week I'm winning that triple threat match or fatal four-way match now. I'm going to win. So you're pretty much going to lay down for me is what he's saying. And if you don't, then this arrangement is over. Then we get another Mike Knox video. <laughs> Oh, man. If you watch the show, you know exactly what I'm talking about. These Mike Knox videos. This drama storyline. Where the hell does this lead? So Mike Knox is back home talking to an old girlfriend. And the girl was hot. And they're looking through, if you remember last week's show, or the, actually the week before, um, with the first Mike Knox video, we found out that his dad ran a carnival but the hurricane destroyed like all the machines and crap. So this week, Mike Knox is looking at the damage and how there are all these old arcade machines and they've been destroyed by the hurricane. And his girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend says, yeah, this is this has really hurt us. These are our money makers right here and they're destroyed. <laughs> Arcades still make money in 2014? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Because I don't buy it. Nobody goes to arcades anymore. Arcades don't even exist anymore. It sucks. I love the arcade. Whenever I go somewhere and they have an arcade, I definitely go in there and play a few games, whatever. But it's not the 80s, man. <laughs> arcades have not made money for many, many years now. So that was just stupid. But then Mike Knox says he's got to go talk to his old man. So this is to be continued. And Where does this go? It's Angelina versus Madison Rain. Velvet Sky comes out. She turns on Madison. DDTs her on the floor. Rolls her in. Angelina covers her for the win. So the beautiful people are reunited. Then it's Kenny King backstage talking to MVP. And he says, hey, what do you got for me? And MVP says he's going to have something for Kenny King next week. Then it's Eric Young versus Samoa Joe. Joe got pretty much all of the offense in here. It was damn near a squash match. And he chokes out Eric Young for the win. So Joe wins the match. Brian Hebner was the referee. Then we see Earl Hebner talking to Brian Hebner. And he's like, well, you know, Eric Young was suspended in the air. So when you raise the arm and it fell three times, it, it didn't really touch the mat or some shit. I don't know what they were talking about. But then the referees just go to the back. That was it. Nothing changes. We technically didn't even get to hear the conversation. So this was beyond stupid. Joe wins. Then Samuel Shaw was apparently suspended this week because last week he went to Christy Hemme in her dressing room and cut off a piece of her hair. Talk about a hazardous workplace for this poor girl. Speaking of the Samuel Shaw storyline, why was he not suspended for all the other creepy stuff he did? Or when he attacked Simon Diamond backstage? But then we get Gunner versus James Storm unlocked. It's a hardcore match, that's what it means. And they used some trash can lids. They had a bunch of chairs. I don't know if they ever used the chairs though, besides the superplex spot. But anyway. Gunner spears Storm off the apron through a table. Then they keep pulling out chairs and not using them, filling the ring with all these chairs. There's like four or five chairs in the ring. Gunner sets up two chairs. One of them's broken. He says, screw it, and goes with it. So he superplexes Storm through the chair because one of them was broke, so he didn't even really touch that one. And then Storm hits Gunner with two back-to-back -back last call super kicks and Gunner kicked out. That was ridiculous. Then Gunner hit Storm with a beer bottle and the F5 for the win. Now, I did like the match. I thought it was good, but there was definitely some silly stuff going on here. And that was the end of the show. Well, technically, the end of the show was the conclusion for the Hunt for Willow. Um, but anyways, overall, I thought this show was actually below average to me. There was just a lot of stuff on here that could have been much better. Um, Gunner vs. Storm was a good match. That should have ended the show. The Hunt for Willow was stupid. Um, the Mike Knox video is beyond stupid. 
the Bully Ray stuff was disappointing. Just, you see the trend here. Stuff that could have been better, and then TNA, for whatever reason, has to make everything so complicated with their storylines. And they gotta always try this bullshit, like this drama storyline with Mike Knox. What does this have to do with wrestling? Anyways, that's my review. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts in the show in the comments, and thanks for watching.